So here it is, the last day of the action-packed Dubai Air Show, and welcome to our end of the show show. As the first show back on the world calendar for Global Air Shows, it really has been fantastic. And while we've been walking around and building it all up over here, somebody has been watching us from up there. So we operate our satellites in mid-inclined orbits, which allows us to take many shots of the same point on Earth every single day. So over the last couple of weeks, we've been collecting in images multiple times per day and collecting those and running our artificial intelligence and object detection on the satellite pictures that we've been collecting so you can see the aircraft here in the images that you see. That company was space and data startup Black Sky, which had its array of satellites watching how we were progressing. More than 1,200 exhibitors and some 85,000 visitors from 150 countries. This really demonstrates the truly global nature of this show. A lot of relationships have been developed. First time visitors, Israel, were looking at developing new partnerships for both civil and defense products. We are sharing the same, uh, the same spirit uh, and uh, we are excited to share knowledge and effort uh, to bring some of our te technology here to the territory, to the benefits of the territory and the world. And I think that we see some of uh, the potential collaboration eye by eye with, with, with our partners at the UAE. And even the regulars found this event worthwhile. We're meeting CEOs and chairmen as the highest percentage of decision makers to attend a uh, Dubai Air Show uh, ever, basically. And I could see uh, when, when I talk to people and meet people that they were so relieved and so excited that COVID is almost over and they now can travel and can meet face to face. We all fed up with Teams and Zoom and all these virtual meetings and we wanted to meet people, shake hands and talk business. Throughout the week, we had our industry sector specialists treading the board, covering stories for the show daily and keeping us informed. So I thought we'd ask them for their high spots from the event. John Lake, Defence Editor, what did you think? To a certain extent, it's been a tale of two mock-ups in that the Sukhoi checkmate is obviously, you know, big news. It's really difficult to understand whether it's the beginnings of a real fighter program or whether it's just mischief making from the Russians. You know, so is it, you know, the beginnings of a real fighter program or is it just, you know, a, a means of Sukhoi grabbing attention to itself? And the other mock-up that's a big story here is the Calidus B-350, an enormous attack aircraft, looks like an old Sky Raider or something, huge prop, festooned with acres of weapons, but it's a mock-up. Is it ever going to be real? You know, the, the little, ordinary, basic Calidus B-250 supposed to be a light attack aircraft. I can't see where this one fits in. Then, of course, third mock-up is the F-35. Lockheed haven't sent a real F-35 to what's supposed to be their next big customer. So that's another. They're funny things to describe as highlights, but they kind of are. Then you've got the Russian helicopters, particularly the Ka-52, in service in the region already with Egypt as the Nile crocodile, which is just amazing, um, and the Mi-28 both giving fantastic displays, bags of power, new rotor systems, fantastic to watch. UAE Air Force giving its usual really polished aerobatic displays with F-16, Mirage 2000, just so much to see. And then, dotted around in the halls, you'll come across this amazing model of a brand new ISR configuration for the Global 6000. It's been fantastic. And when it comes to those reaching out for these opportunities, you could look no further than just down the road to Abu Dhabi, where the UAE's indigenous defense conglomerate Edge is celebrating its second anniversary since the launch of the company in Dubai at the show just two years ago. Edge today is now uh, ranked in the top 25 largest defense companies globally, which I think really shows the scale of the industry here in the UAE is now not just focusing on uh, the local market or even the region, but we've really become a global player in the broader defence and aerospace sector. Um, 
I mean, of course, today Edge plays a significant role in supporting um, our local customer in this in this market. But you know, we have now exported products and solutions into more than 20 countries around the world. The commercial aviation sector always brings theatre to their activities. Mark Pilling had a ringside seat. In the commercial aviation world, this was remarkably a Dubai air show with no big Gulf carrier deals. But even so, over 500 orders were signed and it was not short on theatre. The first actor was Boeing's 777X, which made his international debut and gave the US airframer a welcome boost with a spectacular flying display. The second act saw Airbus lighting up not only the Burj Khalifa, but getting the party started with two massive orders. The third act was all about cargo. While Boeing is still studying a 777X freighter version, the Air Lease Corp deal at Airbus saw it become the launch customer for the A350 freighter with four orders. The conversion market is also red hot, and a joint venture between Etihad Engineering and Israel Aerospace Industries will see these firms establish a 777-300ER passenger to freighter conversion line in Abu Dhabi, laying down a challenge to incumbent suppliers. As the curtains close on the final act here in Dubai, we reflect on the contrasting emotions of the big two. Airbus is bullish, it's confident, focused on market and production rate growth. Unsurprisingly, Boeing is more tentative on this first return to an air show since the start of the pandemic, as it focuses on bringing the next versions of the 737 MAX and the 777X to market. Whether happy or not in the limelight, at this point, both OEMs have positive takeaways from Dubai 2021 and will be looking to build on them into next year. Jill Stockbridge, our business aviation editor, had the good fortune to be watching out for the corporate and private aviation business, and that looked a bit like fun. There were certainly a lot of pretty jets out on the static to be seen. Um, some of the highlights, I'd say, we saw the debut of Aorus, the Russian business jet. A very impressive debut, I would say. Um, EXO were here, as well as VistaJet, but bringing their technology, they were changing the face of how we book charter jets and, and how that actually works for the customer. Uh, Acropolis were here, they gave us the first public viewing of their ACJ320. And Airbus also announced the very first customer for the ACJ220, none other than homegrown Five Group from here in Dubai, and it will be operated by Comlux. Bombardier bought the 7500, but in many ways it was their special mission aircraft that caused perhaps the most interest. Then Dassault gave a strong nod to sustainability, which has obviously been the subject on everybody's lips, even in the private aviation world, by flying their 8X here on 50% sustainable aviation fuel. All in all, it's yeah, surprisingly interesting and surprisingly busy for the business aviation sector. The story that tickled my fancy the most was Chloe Greenbank, when in search of a vegan lunch, she found a helicopter instead. Now, I've seen a lot of innovations in helicopter interior design. This is a first for me and a first for Airbus corporate helicopters. It's a special request from a valued customer, this ACH145 features six seats all kitted out with the ultra leather material, all completely vegan. But as Jill said, across all the industry segments, the biggest subject on everybody's lips was sustainability. Guillaume Faure, the Airbus CEO, believes he can have net zero aircraft by 2035, and the industry as a whole has to keep pushing home the message to the public that we are on track. We have a first hydrogen plane, um, hitting the market in 2035. Why 2035? Because we have started the development of the technologies uh, two years ago. We think you need roughly five years to mature those technologies. They are based on existing things and we don't need to reinvent the laws of physics. Uh, we're using technologies that are applied in other sectors, we're just developing those technologies for aviation. Then we will need two years to prepare the launch of a program, finding the partners, uh, the location for the plants, and preparing the uh, industrial system that, that we need, uh, preparing contracts, uh, funding of these big investments. So 2027, 2028 will be ready to uh, launch the program and then it takes to 2035 to be certified and enter into service. 
And from the airline perspective, Tony Douglas, CEO of Etihad Airways, whose Boeing 787 Dreamliner Eco Demonstrator led the flying display. He talked to me at one of the show's fish tank talks, a new concept for this year's event. And of course, I had to ask him about the subject. Burning fossil fuels uh, with aviation fuel creates uh, CO2, which is clearly undeniable. We can improve it. We've made big commitments to how we get to zero. I think the illustrations from the Green Liner and going forward the Sustainable 50 will probably give us the confidence that we can do more. And quite frankly, we have to do more. And the only balance I think um, I put back to this one again is I think the airlines in general acknowledge this. I think the manufacturers, when we listen to them, are putting more of their R&D dollars than ever before into how they can make more sustainable uh, next generation products. But regulators, policy setters and governments have got a really big part to play in this now. All in all, the first of the major global air shows for two years has been a great success. More than 160 aircraft were on display, in the air and on the ground. We're back in business in a big way and credit to Dubai for putting on a safe show. And we're looking forward now to the next big event, which is the World Defence Show in Saudi Arabia. Well, that's it come to the end of our five days of the Dubai Air Show. It's been exciting and it's been a lot of walking. I've done more than 50 kilometers, would you believe? Thankfully, my friend Don here from Collins Aerospace found me a comfortable seat to sit down to end the show. So, nothing more to do other than say thank you to Boeing for sponsoring our programs and thank you for watching them. All I've got to do now is get out of here. And this says, pull to eject. No, don't touch it!